You are so stupid. Oh, but I love you. Hello, hello. Welcome to Rachel Paints Poorly. My name is Rachel and I paint poorly. Today, we are going to be embarking on part three of our alterations tips for beginning brides and also those who love them. If you have yet to watch the first two, I will provide the links for all y'all who are caught up. Please enjoy for do's and don'ts, alterations appointment edition. First alterations appointment edition. And so without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Do. Be punctual. An alterations appointment is an appointment just at the salon or at the doctor's office. Depending on how many appointments your alteration specialist has that day, even running 10, 15 minutes late can throw the entire schedule out of whack, especially if you have a large, heavily involved dress. Now, this is more geared towards an appointment at a storefront or an alteration shop. Your home-based seamstress is probably going to be a little bit more flexible because let's face it, it's not like I have much else going on throughout the day. However, I probably ran all over my house cleaning like a fiend, so there is that. General rule of thumb, if you're running more than five minutes late, give your alteration specialist a heads up. And if you got the date and or time wrong, or just straight up forgot, don't beat yourself up too much. It happens to everyone, except for me, of course. In that case, no big deal. Call your specialist and get yourself rescheduled. However, don't reschedule repeatedly until you run out of time. Run out of time in this instance means your idea of crunch time, wherein you begin to experience heightened pressure and stress, though that can also mean literally running out of time. I've seen both. This is especially true if you need a specific time slot. Weekend and evening appointments are the first to go, a bit of a no-brainer, but also long weekends and other occasions when people tend to be off work and families congregate. So if you know Aunt Sally is going to be in town the Friday evening before Labor Day, you better be snapping up that appointment ASAP. Speaking of Aunt Sally, do bring helpers. Bridesmaids, sisters, aunts, cousins, your mom, your future mother-in-law, well, maybe not. Joking, I'm joking. Your helpers can assist you in the dressing room, chat with you during your fitting, offer advice and encouragement, and overall make for a memorable, fun experience. Generally, I'd say one to three people is typical. For larger groups, you might, might, want to inform your alteration specialist in advance, only because the size of the alterations area might not readily accommodate a larger party. This is especially true on aforementioned evenings and weekends when alternative space might not be readily available. Also, if you want to bring helpers of the male variety, father, brothers, fiance, it happens, we'll do our best to include him, but depending on the layout of the alteration space and the possibility that you might not be the only fitting taking place at the time, plus the nature of the pinning process, he might be asked to wait outside. I'm sure he'll be very broken up by the request. Joking, still joking. Not joking about this next point though. Don't bring hindrances. Oh boy. Nothing brings down an appointment like that one person who just has to suck all the air out of the room. Odds are, if you have a person like this, she is already on your mind. Do yourself a favor and just don't bring her. I'm serious. Weddings are stressful enough and trying to be nice by inviting her anyway isn't going to change anything. Might as well save yourself the hassle up front and set a nice precedent for the rest of your wedding and also the rest of your life. I don't have a cute Sieg here, so do keep a nice give in your knees. All you choir people or band kids know what I'm talking about, AKA don't lock your knees. Otherwise, you will pass out while taking the band group photo and I will forever be immortalized trying to catch you and looking like this. Pinning can take a while and it might be tempting to lock your knees while you're trying to stand still, especially if you're not used to standing in place for long periods of time. My nurses and my teachers aren't an issue. They have standing down pat, but my office workers, this is especially true if you're also trying to stand in heels, so definitely take the time to break them in first. Finally, if you do start to feel lightheaded for whatever reason, let me know right away. I don't want anyone passing out on me, so don't be embarrassed and try to hold it in because one, it's not going to work, and two, 
It's happened before, so I know what to do to help you. So two things to remember while you're standing there. Keep a nice give in your knees and don't look down. I know you wanna watch me pin your hem, but I promise it is not that interesting. See, when you look down, the front of your dress dips lower. So when you stand up straight again, your hem is going to be too short, meaning I'm going to have to redo it and you're going to have to stand in place longer. So don't look down, but do talk to me if you want, especially if you didn't bring helpers. We can chat about your wedding, your fiance, your pets, anything you like, and we can pass the time in pleasant conversation. Unless you don't wanna chit chat and you'd rather use the downtime to have a nice moment of quiet meditation, that's fine too. It's your appointment, boo-boo. There is, however, one topic of conversation that is off limits. Don't ask me if I poke myself because as soon as you do, I am going to stab my finger and it's going to hurt. Bonus round, do. Ask for help getting dressed. When I drop you off in the changing room, I'm going to tell you to holler if you need help getting dressed, even if you have helpers with you. And I'm not just being polite. Undergarments need fastened, larger dresses can be bulky and cumbersome, and some dresses you can't get into on your own, no matter how hard you try. Odds are my fingers are nimbler and more experienced than all of your helpers as well, so take advantage and let me help you get into your dress faster. That being said, when you holler for help, don't be buck naked without fair warning. Some dresses you really can't wear undergarments with, like none whatsoever, or you might just prefer not to wear any. This is all perfectly legitimate, and I promise I am not looking. With that said, a heads up would be much appreciated, so I can enter with a proper eyeline, and we can keep it that way. That's all for part three. As always, questions and requests can be left down in the comments below. Up next, we will be looking at subsequent fittings, including your final fitting and pickup appointment. A little something to look forward to. Until next time, bye.